Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Chiropractic Student Podcast. Today we are joined by Jim Chester of the Cairo Hustle Podcast and many other chiropractic ventures. Thank you so much for joining us today, Jim. It's really an honor. Appreciate the opportunity. I really appreciate it. And obviously with the time zones, it makes it a little bit more difficult getting each other uh, at a good time, but we made it happen, which is amazing. Yeah, it's 12 in the afternoon here over in Colorado and it's 7 p.m. for you. 7 p.m. Over, yeah. over I'm, in I'm ending UK. my day, you're smack bang in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, for those who um, don't know you, what is, what is your involvement with the chiropractic profession? What do you do? Yeah, I think it's a really uh, important opportunity for me to let people know um, why I fell in love with chiropractic and I didn't become a chiropractor. Mm -hmm. uh, 14 years ago, I just turned 44, if you believe that. Um, I, I was 30 years old and I was bartending at a, a piano bar. And the guy that was working my door uh, doing the ID checks uh, was playing rugby at Palmer College. And I grew up in Davenport, Iowa. And uh, he had been working with me for a couple of years um, throughout his uh, studies at Palmer. And he saw like how I interacted with people. And he uh, kind of like tapped me on the shoulder one day and said, Hey, why are you doing this? Like this life, you know, cause I was, you know, obviously I was a, a part of the scene too. I wasn't like living congruent with chiropractic. I was, you know, running around at 30 years old, mm -hmm. um, five nights a week. And uh, he just said, Hey, I'm opening up a chiropractic center in Chicago. Do you want to come help me run this place? And I was like, bro, I don't know anything about chiropractic, except when I get adjusted, I feel better. He's like, perfect. So he trained me everything that I know. Um, I worked in a chiropractic clinic doing chiropractic biophysics traction setups okay. uh, for six years. So that's a little bit of like the backstory, pun intended. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I uh, was working and I, I decided, you know, we need to make um, more public connection we need to appeal to the public uh view because at the point you know you know seven years ago um documentaries were starting to become a big thing mm -hmm. and uh i knew that everybody was streaming uh shows and they were streaming uh what they were watching from the internet now it's commonplace like mm -hmm. you know but back then we had like actual cable stations that controlled the media that people had to watch because there weren't any other options. And then that's when kind of like in our world, Blockbuster took a downturn and Netflix took an upturn. And then we have this Netflix generation now. Yeah. Well, we created chiropractic, the documentary, because I saw that there was a huge gap. So worked in the clinic, created a documentary film called chiropractic, the documentary. And through that, that's that sequencing. Um, I learned how to do chiropractic screenings really well. Um, and I went out and I did 600 of those in two and a half years and uh, really saw what it was like to talk to the public and really saw what it was like to become a chiropractic sales person and to do sales for chiropractic. Cause you know, when people think about screenings, they're like, oh gosh, you gotta go take some time away from the family today and, you know, go out there and uh, show my spine to people. And hopefully some people come talk to me and, you know, it's a bit, you know, I'm a chiropractor. I'm not really a marketer and, you know, they get this idea. So I kind of like flipped that out on top of its head and said, I'm just going to go after it and did that, you know, and, and in that span, the whole, whole big idea for us was to create a trilogy of chiropractic films. So in 2019, we released uh, chiropractic, the documentary, which I think, uh, or no, we released project patient, our second film. Mm -hmm. And I uh, thought we really did an amazing job of portraying the chiropractic message for non-specific cases. So we focused on anxiety, depression, PTSD, TBI, and uh, addiction. Yep. And we showed how chiropractic case were changing people's lives with the non-traditional, you know, neck pain, back pain, headache cases. And I was like, we're going to go into this and we're going to find uh, some military people that were blowing up. We're going to find Olympic athletes that, you know, got traumatic brain injuries. We're going to find people that are just every walk of life dealing with addiction, uh, depression, anxiety, like things that are really like taking the world over right now. Mm -hmm. And that film was released in 2019. 
And uh, then in the midst of that, we decided to create Cairo Hustle because I was like, we just need to keep documenting these stories. Because as I was interviewing people for the two films, I got a flavor to say, there's a bigger story out there. Like, what are we going to do to like keep on telling this chiropractic story? Because I would go through all the, you know, events and, you know, people on stage were saying, hey, go tell the chiropractic story, tell the story, tell the story. And I was like, well, why don't we just tell the story? Yeah. So then five years later, we did uh, 1,100. We've done 1,100 interviews now of the chiropractic profession. And uh, we're not stopping any day soon. So I, I know I offered a lot of information there pretty quickly, but that's a synopsis of uh, why I believe you wanted to have an interview with me today to talk to your your uh, audience. 100%. And there's a, there's a few things there that like even some well the, I mean I don't think I'll ever do over 600 screenings in my lifetime as a chiropractor like I probably do one or two a month 600 plus screenings in two and a half years is almost it's a it's almost 28 a, a month 28 a month yeah that's yeah, I, was, I was doing 28 a month and I was averaging 83 new patients a month doing them and was this for the chap um who opened it up no, this was for, I worked in an office in uh, Chicago, Yeah. put a transfer to an office in Denver mm -hmm. and I quit working on both of those clinics and I went out and started my own business doing screenings. So I eventually had 30 chiropractors in the Denver metro area that were putting me on to events every day. I was working every day. I had two days off a month. All in the name of chiropractic. Yeah, just soldiering up. You're more passionate than, like, well, you do more work for chiropractic than a lot of chiropractors out there. Like, I'll say it. Um, it's incredible. And how much, um, like, information do you absorb of chiropractic outside of that? Like, have you read green books and blue books? And how much, like, how much do you know of that kind of stuff? Have you read a lot of those things or? Actually, those are, that's a really good question. Um, I read Reggie Gold's white book. Yeah. Um, I have never read a green book, um, but I, I did, but I, but I did read uh, Dee Dee Palmer's The Chiropractic Adjuster 1912. I read the first book. Yeah. That's a green book. By, by the first chiropractor. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> that, that's a good, that's like the first book. Okay. You have that. I, I read that book. That's really cool. <laughs> You'll probably rewrite it at some point, I'm sure. Um, so so I, I, I haven't read anything past that. Yeah. But I did read that book, and that was uh, about eight years ago. And it was quite a big task oh, because I mean, one, I, you're from the UK, right? Yeah. And, in, you know, in Ireland, there's uh, – um, no, it's, it's not McTimony. It's, uh, gosh, the college uh, in Ireland, in Dublin, uh, but it has the Book of Kells. Um, anyways, the book of Kells is like the Irish Bible okay. and they turn one page a month and they have it on display. It's at Trinity college. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 And there's this, there's, uh, this book with symbols in it without words. It's from seventh century, mm -hmm. but they turn a page like every month or so and, that's what and like. they put it on display. So reading a, a page out of a uh, text of the green books is maybe you have to spend a month on it. And to, to just understand the complexity of the mind of D.D. Palmer or B.J. Palmer or some of the contributors that they had, Stevenson's. Mm -hmm. Like, if you really want to understand these texts, it's not like, oh, I got through another green book. Yeah. You know, you actually have to, like, nurture it and spend time with it and download it. Yeah. And, and that's where it's really helpful with, like, the Strauss Blue Books, where they basically give a overview a synopsis he breaks it down and puts it into newer terminology because i find every time i open up a green book i feel like even though i'm further on in the book i'm rereading a lot of stuff it, it's very samey samey but the blue books and, and the synopsis ones do really well at that i, I just went to life college yeah. two weekends ago and attended one of their big groups um but i also went to my first dynamic essentials oh yeah which is uh, one of the longest running chiropractic gatherings um, that is known to the chiropractic profession. And I just picked up 
Here we go. He's getting something. I just picked up uh, some Sid Williams books, Sid Making Williams. Lasting Purpose, A Way of Life. That was his first book. I picked up Lasting Purpose, A Mindset for Success. And then I picked up the third one is uh, The Road to Success Starts in the Heart. So I do read quite a bit. Yeah, those and, are on the uh, to read. They're, they're next up, are they? So, the, I mean, I don't fall too far off track from constantly reigniting my mind with mm-hmm. chiropractic texts. Actually, it's a really cool thing, Lewis, is I've had uh, three people reach out to me, re- no, four people reach out to me recently to, uh, you know, and you get a book and you like read through the first couple pages and there's like the people that write like acknowledgement pieces. Yeah. I've had three people in the past two months reach out to me that were publishing chiropractic books to give them you know snippet editions as like an acknowledgement to their books and one a chiropractic business book um to write the forward to it and uh the other four that was written in it was by uh you know i think he was at palmer and he was at life college or life university his name is guy reekman yeah yeah but uh he and i are both forwarding um this chiropractic business book so I think you have to read a lot though, in order to get opportunities and you have to produce a lot for people to say, I'm going to seek that person out because of their expertise. hundred percent. And that's one of the things I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to talk to the biggest advocates and names in chiropractic. That's what we're all trying to do. And you are one of those who, like I can say your name and Cairo hustle. And most people will know about it if they listen to podcasts and it's you don't think much of it but that's a huge thing you're put, being put on like a stage with these other people and these other names and it's very humbling to to hear it sometimes but it's so brilliant what you're doing for the profession and what you've done so far and I'm excited for next year when you're saying you're going to come out with daily releases it's going to be incredible it's only it's only going to help so we really appreciate that. Um, yeah. You know, Lewis, before you ask the next thing, it's when I go somewhere and people don't know me and I say, do you know who Joe Rogan is? Yeah. And they say, yeah, of course. I go, well, that's me for chiropractic. Yeah. literally. And I say, that's what, what the work that we produce matters to the world of chiropractic on the same level and a smaller ecosystem though, mm-hmm. that what Joe Rogan does for a global stage And I think that people just need to understand that the more content that we put out to the public facing the popular opinion of chiropractic, the better that the longevity of the profession has um, to survive and to thrive with, you know, just, we need better PR. Yeah, hundred (laughs) percent. Easily, easily need better PR. Like it's a big struggle in chiropractic to get marketing and social media, right? Because we're stuck in this we want to be super holistic vitalistic i don't know however you want to call it um but then a lot of people are stuck behind these jurisdictions that we have to stick to and medical rules and councils that are overlooking so that we can't really truly speak our principles if that makes sense and that's one of the biggest struggles like there are people who are outspoken chiropractors who get penalized for that so it puts a lot of people off becoming that chiropractor but your platform and podcast is a great way to do it because it's open it's freedom of speech and like you say you protect the sacred trust of the subluxation when you start every podcast it's and and that's what i really like about it it's an open conversation it is the joe rogan of chiropractic and if anyone listening hasn't listened to the chiro hustle podcast they must go and listen to it after this episode let this one finish first and then do it and listen to it <laughs> but it's, it's interesting and you also do it with someone as well um do you want to give a shout out to it's luke isn't it yeah so luke Millette, we've been working together for over a decade and uh we we started this the show up in a 700 square foot apartment um near denver university um, I told him I had this idea to uh, create a show on chiropractic and, uh, I told him I was going to move him out and we were going to do this thing. And mm-hmm. that was, uh, back in 2016 and, uh, we've been running now for five years and, uh, yeah, he's, uh, 
he was on the show for quite some time as the co-host, mm -hmm. but now he's the executive producer and he just makes sure that, you know, the show's running smoothly. And here's the thing that people need to know. I think it's just good to know. I've never edited a podcast in my life. I've never uploaded a podcast to a podcast hosting site. Mm -hmm. um, I think what makes us unique is I stay in my zone of genius yeah. and I do the one thing that no one else can do. And I think that that goes well for chiropractors to know too, is you don't have to do everything. You just do the thing that you do well and build confidence in people to support you with your grandiose vision. And I think that that's the part which most people start to burn out on is they think that they have to like do the intros, do the midways, run the website, do the graphics, get the guests, make sure all assets are collected. Um, the quicker you understand that team helps and that, you know, the individual, um, really, I think really the individual burns out when they try to do everything. Yeah. So if I can just offer any, like, you know, clarity for people that are considering ever becoming a podcaster or wanting to do something to like, you know, run a practice, um, you have to like recruit well, recruit good people. And that's what I did with Luke. 10 years ago is I found somebody that um, had different skill sets than me mm. and we partnered up. And I think that that's really important for people to understand is um, recruit well and acknowledge people, you know, and, and treat them well. And I think that if you do that, um, you'll find people that will want to work with you forever. And you offer a little bit of help with that kind of thing as well. I, I've, I started a few of your, um, podcast courses that you do to help like bring your podcast up to the next level and a few things like that and you're constantly pulling out resources and things for chiropractors and podcasters whatever it might be what what sort of things are you helping with at the moment i think confidence mm -hmm. um structuring idea and actually going to the level of um, giving yourself permission to do it I think there's so much when it comes to like podcasting, because here's the thing, the first, I bought equipment, I bought a light, I bought, uh, the link, the ring light thing. I bought the, uh, Yeti blue microphone and I bought a little, um, Logitech camera, like a webcam. And, uh, it, honestly it sat in the closet for two years, yep. like Cairo hustle should have launched uh, seven years ago instead of five years ago. Wow. But I'll tell you, I didn't, I didn't feel the, I didn't have self-confidence. I didn't like the way I looked on video. Mm -hmm. I didn't like my voice and I didn't understand the tech. So there were a lot of barriers for us to actually start. So number one, I had to get out of my own way and tell myself, okay, doesn't matter what you look like. Yep. Fair. Doesn't matter what you sound like. Fair. Now, how am I going to solve part three? Mm -hmm. well, I'm going to fly Luke out and put him up and have him up, start this thing with me because he's the tech guy. Mm -hmm. So I think a big thing of what we're doing, um, it's, it's like, you know, I created a, a course and I taught people how to do screenings and how to do scheduling events and get new patients. I think the hardest thing when you create coursework and you create something that teaches people how to do stuff is I think it's something crazy, like 90% of every book that gets bought never gets read. 90% of every, yeah, 90% of every course that's ever bought never gets studied. And here's the last, 90% of every supplement that gets purchased never gets used. So we have this 10% zone where people actually take the supplements, read the books and study the courses. So digital courses sell, but people don't have follow through. People know that they need better health, but they don't take the supplements. People buy the books, but they don't read them. So there's a lot, there's this 10% zone where people are actually doers. And sadly to say, a lot of the things that we, you know, support people with, they don't want to actually do them. Mm -hmm. Actually, what they'll do is they'll say, we do this for me. So they'll trust us enough to actually you know, put their credit card information in, but what it does is it creates business for us. It doesn't create follow through. No. So then, you know, people, when I release the new patients in a box, uh, how to get new patients at 
uh, screen events course, it created a huge business for me. It was basically my loss leader that mm -hmm. people are like, Oh, I'll buy that. But what it did is they're like, ah, uh, you know, really, I want to hire you because, you know, really I went through the stuff and yeah, you know, they, they, they kind of just don't have the confidence to go do it. So I think a lot of people, they just want somebody to, you know, clap for them yeah. and uh, they want to find somebody that's really good at doing something and hire them. So, yeah, but you know, if people are curious, they can always reach out to me and uh, they can get the podcast training course and, you know, we'll help you with it. Love it. And it's interesting you say that because it is a common thing. You find those people who are the doers, that 10%, are usually the ones who are on their own offering a service like you're probably at the point now where if someone approached you and was like hey i want you to come work for me you're like no but i have a structure already that i can fit i can fit you in here rather than you fitting me into your business and that's because you are in that 10 percent of the doers because you're so desirable and that's and those people don't stick around for long as employees because they usually have a great idea and they build on it and they do it. Um, and that's a really interesting, I never really thought about it that way. And I didn't know the 10% rule. And that's really interesting. That's probably very true as well. Like I look at the books beside me and I'm like, yeah, I've got probably got 10 just sitting here and I've probably only read like four. And so I have more to read, but it's, it's an interesting thought. Well, here's another really like crooked like thing is, most everybody that becomes a doctor cheated on their tests and you know, they become doctors. And here's a really other funny thing is even the person that finishes last in their class is still a doctor. Yeah. So, That's you know, true. when we think about like, who do we trust? We trust personality, mm. but we trust grit. We, we trust desire. We trust follow through. And and, as well, you know, from the second you talk to someone like, if that's a person who loves what they do or not, it is really, really obvious. You can't be happy for other people. Like you can't manufacture happiness for them. Like somebody has to give themselves permission to be happy. And I think that that see, you can catch that when you see somebody's personality mm -hmm. because I call it your soul signature. Like that's how you show up every day. And you can tell just watching somebody for, you know, a few hours interacting with them, if they're really happy people mm -hmm. and that's your soul signature and nobody else can, you know, make a better signature of your soul than you can. So why wouldn't you show up enthusiastically? Why wouldn't you show up full of power and energy desire and work hard? And I think, you know, when people are going through and becoming who they're supposed to be, they need a conversation like this as a, as a, a very um, sobering reminder that you can do anything you want, yeah. but you have to give yourself permission to do it. Yeah. Especially how, if you have like the accessibility, like we take it for granted a lot. Like I'm sat in a lovely warm room and I'm going to have dinner and I've got electronics and the ability to make this podcast. And if you have the accessibility to listen to this podcast, you're probably in a really lovely position where you can, do anything you want to do um where, where do you see chiropractic heading yeah you know i ask this question quite often in our show you asked me and i was i've been so excited to ask you it back mm -hmm. <laughs> you know i i from the baseline is chiropractic will go as far as it will if chiropractors believe in the adjustment Chiropractors will go as far as they will if they don't remove chiropractic from chiropractic education. Um, chiropractic will go as far as it can if chiropractors respect and care about each other as practitioners. Um, there has to be a inner circle of chiropractic that acknowledges each other rather than sees the competition. There has to be an artistic revolution in chiropractic. We have to come to the golden age where we realize that all chiropractors will do it different, but all chiropractors will do it. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And we have to come to that acceptance level is if I come see you, you're going to check and detect and correct vertebral subluxation different than the chiropractor in the next town over. And that's the art. So until chiropractors give themselves artistic approval as a collective, um, chiropractor will stay stagnant, will stay dogmatic, and will stay attacked. And that's because you can attack an ununified front way easier than you can attack a unified front. So we need to become more unified, and I call it unity through diversity. And we need to understand that there needs to be a, um, we can't forget philosophy and we can't forget that every chiropractor is an artist. And these are baseline things. And then obviously you opened up asking me about philosophy. Mm -hmm. um, chiropractors need to know philosophy and they need to know what the sacred trust is. Those are BJ Palmer's last words, by the way. If anybody really wants to know why the sacred trust matters is it was BJ Palmer's last words. And if you really want to take chiropractic to the future and really protect it then guard it well. I love that. That is such a, such a powerful sentiment to finish on as well. And it really reiterates for me, your understanding for chiropractic is so interesting why why aren't you a chiropractor well i got a degree in marketing and journalism yeah and I, and I use my skills that i love as best i can for something that i love and no one else could take my position that i've created in the profession and uh, i don't want to take yours <laughs> i get that but You'd be such a, I mean, you already are a powerhouse of the profession. Um, and that's just me being really selfish, asking you to be a chiropractor, basically, because the words that you say have so much, like I get goose, uh, that last sentiment you said, I got get goosebumps because you say it with such conviction and ease and passion that it, you know, when you tell when someone is bullshitting you, like you can tell that came from the heart and that came from the soul and I like that. That's going to be like the headline of, of the podcast. I already got it sorted. That's brilliant. Um, is there anything else you'd like to leave our listeners with today, Jim? Is there any bits of inspiration or things you'd like to say? Well, I, I do. And uh, I, I think that people need to find spirituality first and they need to get it right with God. Mm -hmm. And then they need to focus on their family and then they need to focus on business. And if you go out of sequencing with any of that, you'll deal with a lot of trouble in your development as a professional or as a human. So you have to have a hierarchy and you have to process and sequence because anything that goes out of sequence, you have to go back and redo it. And I think every day you need to honor your body. You need to honor your spirituality. You need to honor your relationships and you need to sharpen your business skills. So every day you have to do better for yourself. And then the only way to make maximum achievement with that is to create accountability. So find a pod of two to three people to maybe five that you'll reach out to daily and report to them and share with them what you did for your body, share with them what you did for your spirituality, share with them what you did for your relationships and share with them what you did for your business and report to them and don't miss a day. And I think if you do that, accountability is what will take everyone to the next level because we'll always tell ourselves we'll do it, but we'll do more for other people than we will ourselves. For sure. And that that goes very hand in hand with the chiropractic profession. I see a lot of chiropractors becoming ill because they've given and not put any accountability on themselves first as well. Yeah, I totally agree. And I went through through a similar thing in my first year. I dove in and kind of messed my life up a little bit and just didn't look after myself and got back on track which is nice but you live and you learn don't you, you live and you learn yeah and you know and if everybody wants to reach out to me um, if you're a chiropractor you're watching this and you're like oh wow this guy said some really interesting stuff and you want to jump on a show with me feel free um find me on the facebook um if you want to send me an email it's jim at chirohustle.com 
I'll and, leave uh, all the links below. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you know somebody just wants to, you know, have a 10 minute pick my brain session, I'll make myself available. Do it. And then record it and post it online for everyone to see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jim. It, it's really insightful and, and I love having the opportunity to share your message with the world as well on the podcast. And it's brilliant. And I really am appreciative of everything that you've done for the profession. And we all are. Um, I know my boss, Tom Waller, he always sings your praises. He absolutely loves you. And um, I'm really happy I got you on the show. So thank you so much for your time today. And thank you for, for your message as well. Yeah, brother. Keep charging. Keep taking care of people. <laughs>